Have you been playing in a worship band or leading worship for a really, really long time and kind of in a funk, maybe uh, not really motivated to practice, dread coming to rehearsal, even wondering why on earth you do this in the first place? If that describes you, I found something on the internet that you need to watch. Hey, it's Dave Dolphin at practicalworshiplog.com, sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the everyday worship leader. And I have a friend named Jeff, and I've known him for several decades. He's played for all kinds of different people in all kinds of different venues in all kinds of different states. And he's just one of those guys that's such a joy to be around because he's in such a good place in his life. And I remember when he wasn't. And if anything, he's a great encouragement to me to know that God is still at work taking broken, frail people and making them brand new. And he recently posted something on his Facebook where he was talking about playing in a worship band and being in ministry and just those moments in his life when he was in that funk, following a leader that he didn't necessarily want to follow, even questioning, why on earth am I even doing this? It was just, it was really good. You got to watch this. This is my friend, Jeff. Hey, what's up, everybody? I hope you're having a good day. Um, I just wanted to post... Uh, some things that's been going on inside my heart and in my head that that I've been feeling lately and um, just wanted to share it. I've been doing worship music for 20 years now. I've made a lot of mistakes, um, a lot of big mistakes, a lot of small mistakes, and, and uh, I've learned a lot through those mistakes. And I just, I, I've been growing a passion to kind of help out Maybe younger guys that are that are getting into this, that have a you know a long career ahead of them of being in a worship band, or or maybe even volunteer musicians across the board. You know, it's all it's all the same. And I want to hit some on you know those times when you might be under somebody that you just simply are having a hard time respecting. And I've been there myself. Um, I've I've been in a place in my worship career worship guitar career where I've had an attitude and um, an ungratefulness and I want to talk about what that did and then how I got out of it. What I like to do a lot that helps me keep on a good a good heart in what I'm doing is I love to go back to when I first started doing worship music. I, when I was 18 years old I became a Christian and I was just on fire and in love with Jesus and um, I barely knew how to play guitar I didn't even know that I could sing and I just started doing it one night and for the youth group of the small small little church that I was at and I remember you know getting there and setting up the sound system um, practicing on a separate night and the band was terrible but where I was I just wanted to see people changed. I wanted to see people worship. I wanted to see revival, you know, and here I am 20 years later. I still like to go back to that place where my heart was just so in it. And it didn't matter if I got paid a dime to do it. I just wanted to do it because I felt it was a calling. I had purpose. And, you know, and again, and through the years, you know, unfortunately for me in times of my life, it, it, it really became a gig, you know, and I think that that's pretty normal. I think in no matter what you do, you know, it can always become just work. But I want to talk about getting out of that and getting back into the passion of what we want to do and what we do do. At our church, every weekend, there is somebody coming in that has drug problems. There is somebody coming in the door that has problems with believing in God. There's somebody coming in the door that struggles with gambling. There's people that come into the door that are having problems in their marriage. There's people coming in the door that are having problems with controlling their kids. And their, their life is hard because I know life is hard. But I want to restore what we do on stage for you that you do that – what, what we do on stage with our faces lit up because we love what we're doing and we love the God that we're worshiping gives them hope, gives them um, hope, you know. And so what we do is a very big deal, a very, very big deal. One of the biggest things 
that I want to touch on now is just respecting your pastor, respecting your leader, and how important that is. Um, I have played for some folks that I have thought, what in the world has God put this person here for? You know, and and I, I had a hard time following them. I had a hard time um, just sorting it out in my head. I'm, I'm like, this person doesn't seem to be qualified to do this. And it really affected my attitude. It affected my attitude and it affected my gratitude. Um, so whether that's your worship pastor, your pastor, or somebody in somebody in leadership, what, basically what it comes down to it is somebody that is over you. You know, um, as a man, being a guy, it's hard to submit to authority. It really is hard. Um, us guys love our egos. And, you know, gosh, the older we get, the more we have to fight our egos. And in situations where I've been, I've had to be in a place where I have had to follow a guy that's a lot younger than me and and less talented than me. And that was hard for me for a while. But what I started to realize is, like, respecting a leader is more about my character than it is theirs. Respecting leadership is more about my character than it is theirs. I do want to respect them. I do want to respect the church that I'm in and, and, and be on board with everything. I want to be bought in to what they're doing. Now, there might be some things that they're doing that, that I wouldn't do, but I want to be in a place where I am on board and I trust their decision, whether if it would have been my decision or not. You know, and so what are some ways that, that you can change your heart in that? You know, the first thing that, that I do that I would challenge you to do is if you're having problems with that is start praying for your leadership and make yourself an appointment every single day to pray for them for two weeks. Um, now, this is a very simple thing. This is something that, that I learned um, a few years ago. Just pray for them. Um, and don't pray, you know, God, I pray that you show them, you know, where they're messing up. And, you know, but that, that's an egotistical prayer. Pray, God, I pray that you make them a great leader. God, I pray that you show them how much you love them. That's what I would pray, two different things that they would be a great leader and that you would show them how much they love them. And what that does, whether if it changes anything or not, it changes your heart. Um, one thing that I've always learned about prayer is it changes me inside my circumstances, and it doesn't change my circumstances, but it changes me to where I can be at the place where I fully accept my circumstances and I'm happy about it. Um, I have a gratitude. Um, one of the most important things in my life is gratitude. I have learned that the key to my joy is gratitude. And I apply that to what I do on stage every weekend. I apply that to what I get to do. Um, man, to be able to play in a great worship band every weekend and play good music with a cool pedal board, you know, whether you're on drums or keys or whatever, it's just such a gift that we get to do this. Always have gratitude for what you get to do. Always have gratitude. It's very, very important. Um, you know, for a guy like me, gratitude, it, it's a little easier for me. I feel like, you know, for 10 years I was a drug addict. I lost everything. Um, I, I, I lost my car. I lost, I didn't even have a bank account. You know, I, the bank wouldn't let me have a bank account because I couldn't, I couldn't keep it um, over zero balance because I was spending it all on drugs. So I lost everything. Um, and the only thing I had was the clothes on my back, you know, and, and, you know, Years later, I look at it now, and I have a car, and I have a, a house. You know, I have a, a music room full of music equipment, and, you know, a dog, and, you know, I have neighbors that like me, you know, and I have 
you know, I just look at everything that I have now and and I, a gra- gratefulness is is very easy for me because of where I come from. Um, so look at what you have and what you get to do every week and be grateful for that. Don't let it become work. Don't let it become a gig. Bring yourself back to whenever you first started doing this and you did it for free, you know, and you might still be doing it for free now. I don't know. But to the ones that have found yourself in that uncomfortable place of just dragging yourself there, you know, remember back when you first started doing it. I promise you there are people coming in to your auditorium that probably don't believe in God that could believe that you do you know i had a sponsor that would always tell me and i and i would i would um come to him and say man i'm having trouble believing in god today because my life is just so pitiful and you know even though i did that to myself and he would always say if you can't believe in god believe that i do and i want to i want to i want to transfer that to us you know there are people coming into our auditoriums that can't believe in god but they can believe that we do And that makes it very, very important. 